Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our first European five-a-day symposium. It is also the culmination of our three years NEC5 campaign, which was carried out with the support of the EU. I'm very grateful for the invitation. And, and as you've heard, I'm a head of sector uh, now for fruit and vegetables in uh, in the DG agriculture. Uh, I, I have to say that uh, we have a sister DG uh, in charge of uh, health and uh, nutrition, that is DG Santé, but uh, we work closely with them. So I, I can also uh, speak a little bit about what they do. So um, this, is, this symposium actually comes at the right time. It is not necessarily sustainability that is at the highest uh, uh, worry of um, of uh, stakeholders it's also our people eating healthily um, and so I, I'm very much looking forward to the debates today and as I was reflecting on on um, how to um, look at today we are all here I think convinced of the benefits of fruit and vegetables um, of eating fruit and vegetables and um, but what would be then for therefore very useful is to learn from each other and, and get each other's perspective. I'm very happy that we can come together to discuss with experts uh, the question of science, politics, economy, um, which contribute to more uh, effectively establishing fruits and vegetables in our diets. Or in this case, it might uh, make more sense to say, with the goal of promoting the consumption of at least five portions of vegetables and fruits a day, as recommended by both the Fünf am Tag Verein and the Agrama Austria in our international EU-sponsored campaign, Snack 5, Europe and Tourist Fruits and Vegetables. Uh, even if we in Austria um, are a little closer to the goal of five portions, as the SNAC5 uh, evaluations happily show, we at AMA see it as one of the, our most important responsibility to communicate the enjoyment that comes from consuming all the fresh vegetables and fruits grown by our farmers in Austria and even in, in Europe. I'm looking forward to today and an interesting symposium. Thank you very much for your intention and enjoy food and vegetables five times a day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carsten, for your kind introduction. I would like to welcome all of you, ladies and gentlemen, and it will be my pleasure to show you some data on the effects of fruit and vegetables on health. Give you an information on the nutritional situation in Germany. Uh, the second part of my presentation is an umbrella review on vegetable and fruit consumption and the risk for selected nutrition related diseases. And the third part, last not least, will be the comparison of the food based dietary guidelines of the German Nutrition Society with the planetary health diet and the actual consumptions of vegetables and fruits. At first, we had a look at the nutritional recommendations on vegetables and fruits. And you can see on this table this, that the various national and international institutions have published food-based dietary guidelines with recommendations for the intake of vegetables and fruits. And you see that some of them provide one recommendation for vegetables and one for fruits. This one you see on this uh, slide. Here you can see the combined recommendations for vegetables and fruits. I would like to show you this uh, overview of the results, <clears throat> showing the relation between the intake of vegetables, fruits and meat, and the incidence of selected nutrient-related diseases. For the consumption of vegetables, you can see an inverse correlation for the risk of stroke, of coronary heart disease, and colorectal cancer. In contrast to this, there was no relationship found for the risk of breast cancer and type 2 diabetes mellitus. 
With regard to food consumption, there was an inverse correlation for the risk of stroke, coronary heart disease, and breast cancer. And in contrast to this, there was no clear correlation for the risk of colorectal cancer and type 2 diabetes mellitus. The results of this umbrella review suggest that vegetables and fruit intake described as high as in the included studies has a beneficial effect on health and thus they confirm the current recommendations of the German Nutrition Society on vegetables and fruit consumption. The findings of the umbrella review support the food-based dietary guidelines of the German Nutrition Society and of other countries. They recommend a wholesome diet that consists primarily of plant-based foods, such as vegetables and fruits, and a lower proportion of animal-based foods, such as meat. The comparison with intake data indicates, as I just mentioned, that there is a need for a substantial change in the German population's diet, which could make an enormous contribution to a diet that is both more sustainable and health promoting. Good morning again and again from Vienna. It's a pleasure to be here and I'm very delighted for the invitation and that you're having me. And as you can see, um, I'm trying to talk a bit about the nutritional significance. Now, why is that? Why are fruit and vegetables so important? We heard already that there's a, a, a positive correlation with a few, um, let's say, non-communicable diseases. Um, the main reason is the composition of, of course, of fruits and vegetables. And I just picked out uh, part of all the recommendations actually is not only to promote a higher intake of fruit and vegetables or to promote a certain amount uh, of fruit and vegetables, but part of these recommendations is also not to focus on a handful or few selected uh, sorts of, uh, of fruits and vegetables, but to, to keep that as colorful as possible. So to, to focus also not only on the amount of fruit and vegetables, but also on the variety of fruits and vegetables, because the reason for that is that those nutrients we have just talked about um, are not being provided by one single fruit or one single vegetable. I wanted to answer the questions, when are people actually consuming fruit and vegetables? So where would you have the highest, highest potential to improve fruit and vegetable consumption? Um, we have, uh, in that case, vegetable consumption, which is being consumed typically during dinner in Austria. So 64.7, 64% roughly are consuming their vegetables uh, during dinner and about 26% uh, during lunch. So uh, vegetables uh, are not an important part of uh, in-between meals, of snacks. In bit in contrast to uh, fruit, uh, as you can see here, fruit is um, part of lunch, uh, but 23% are consuming fruit as an afternoon snack. And quite surprisingly, about 70% are consuming fruit as a late night snack. So if you want to promote vegetable intake, um, that would be uh, helpful to promote it as a snack, as you can see depicted by the picture on the uh, right, top right hand. And fruit, on, uh, on the other hand, are frequently consumed as already as snacks in the afternoon and as a late night snack. And if you want to promote fruit intake, at least according to the Austrian data, uh, the highest potential to increase fruit consumption would be the promotion of fruits as part of the breakfast. This, this is keep fruit where you can see it. This is like the case for many other um, food components, diet, diet components. If you place them where you can see them, consumption increases. Uh, what also is quite helpful, and I found that an interesting recommendation is to explore the product aisle and choose something new. Again, talking about or addressing the variety and the color, color of the different fruit and vegetables. I like I like that recommendation. And what I found quite interesting as well, this is partly uh, already uh, done in the in the uh, in different countries. Make it a meal, so try to cook new recipes and uh, find new ways of integrating vegetables especially, but also fruit into a daily diet with uh, new recipes and things like that. I have one point. I'm not really happy with nudging because 
according to my experience, it is not really helpful or not much, much helpful. I have one thing and I was quite surprised to experience that. We just recently did, these results are not published yet, we just recently did um, um, a survey on the nutrition knowledge of people. And, what, and we also asked whether people know uh, the recommendations of fruit and vegetable intake that this should be five a day. And it was surprising for me that a large part of the population do not know about these recommendations. So apparently uh, the it's just a matter of marketing and uh, a public relation again. And I, should we, I think it's about time that we should, should start a new com a campaign on five a day. And, yes. and then we are back to marketing. I think that's the most important thing. It's uh, continuous marketing. I know that costs a lot of money which no one is willing to pay. I'm sorry, for, we all know that, but I think it's very important to at least promote fruit and vegetables in the regular way as food industry does with all the other products. And one more point is that is the availability of fruit and vegetable. I think that's a, ma a major point as well. If you go to the different food outlets, it's quite easy to get a hamburger, to get a roll or something like that, or an easy sandwich, uh, but it's hard to get a, a piece of apple or a, I don't know, a carrot or something like that. So it's, it's very rarely that you can buy something like that. I know it even from school buffets, um, they, they do have a wide range of different uh, snack products. And, and in, a, in a corner hidden somewhere is a, a few uh, old apples or things like that. So this should change actually quite a lot. The availability, I think, is one of the major arguments also. Yes, well, I'd like to jump in um, to a topic which I think is a bit different to the ones we've heard before. It's about um, the Vego myth. Um, that's why I'd like to reflect a bit on how Corona affected our food. What we've seen worldwide, really worldwide, is much more home cooking. We spent such a much more time in the kitchen, uh, especially in the beginning, home cooking. And I've seen Google research on how to cook potatoes, how to cook rice. So they were really beginners and the foodies which really gained lots of weight and shared their new ideas and videos, cooking videos and stuff like this. So this really was a big topic. Um, we also changed the way how we did our shopping. Suddenly we didn't do it from the belly, we, we started to write lists again, which was nearly um, skipped the last years, but now it's back. We are more conscious on how we buy and where we buy. And this was a big change. Um, the focus was mainly on local, local, local. And I think we see now that uh, we see changes uh, that um, the people offering food are really trying to reflect on these new needs on local. And we've seen a big growth on organic, especially in the German speaking countries. We've seen a shift uh, in actually health. Which means, yes, I've, um, um, Jürgen, I could send you some pictures there where, where we see that food industries really started to grow um, after two weeks of very emotional, um, hardcore um, food safety buying. Then we started to cook fresh food, and food and vegetables really grew up uh, nearly all over Europe. And again, here, a need for organic was growing. Uh, for the foodies, um, the topic of sourdough uh, was surprisingly present in the social media. And uh, I think it's a matter of life quality. If you can smell a fresh bread in your oven, it gives you a kind of security and a feeling of better life in a completely new uh, world with Corona. And uh, another thing we've learned so much about electronics, connectivity, and um, new kind of sharing meals and drinking experience developed. Zoom drinking, uh, I think this is something here to stay, to share with friends internationally and um, get a bit closer and discuss about quality here and why not do it with fruits or vegetables. Um, so we've seen lots of New developments also concerning takeaway, ghost kitchens, and uh, topics like this, which would be interesting to reflect on. And this shows that Corona was not 
uh, a crisis of the finances. It was a health crisis. And that's why organic grew. And um, I think this is a, quite an interesting context that food quality, for example, also combined with organic, is something people are more concerned if they try to eat more healthy. Here we've got um, fresh data from a European study, which says nearly for half of the population in Europe were saying health is more important. But my point is that I'm really seeing a shift in the awareness of quality and health. So the concern about where food and vegetable come from and the quality is really growing. And a new aspect which is really very much alive and will grow very fast is the topic of sustainability. So quality of food is really increasingly viewed holistic and this is challenging. And um, before I focus on the meat consumption, consumption and what it means to food and vegetables, let me have an overview. Because I think it's a good time to really have a broader view of the changes of food quality and a paradigm change. The old paradigm, which brought us in this society of abundance, um, was mainly focused on price. Price was in the center and it was about quality and quantity and convenience, but price was always the main aspect. And it was part of being a good household wife or husband or being a good cook, you would focus on the price. But we've seen changes before Corona and now it's with the force of um, the epidemic we've seen that there's a stronger need on quality. The understanding of quality is broadening up and this is a chance. And uh, aspects of sustainability are really popping up, especially in the younger parts of society. And this could be also a very powerful drive focusing um, in the future. So I see um, a new paradigm slowly uh, growing into our society. And uh, this looks uh, right now quite complex and one could get lost quite easily. Um, but this complexity, I think we need because we can see that societies are getting more complex and it's very hard to make people happy with one dish. It's getting more complex. And this uh, map reflects on new um, ways to find solutions to different problems. So we need a very bold vision on the future of food and vegetables, and we need very innovative network. So COVID-19 is really an acceleration uh, for change. On a long run, so there is no fast answer, but to me, the trend of local exotic might make even a future for the farmers of food and vegetables because there they can get better money and good money but this doesn't make it cheaper i think we would have to get the farmers closer to the consumer and try to bring a broader variety of food and vegetables to the people I, well it depends what age if we talk about children i think everyone is happy that the school is open again but the way how we feed the people, uh, the children on a day-to-day -day level in the schools is really reflecting on low money and not quality. And I think as children in school are getting used to a new food pattern, I think we would, should really focus and work with chefs to find um, recipes which make vegetables more fun and make them look uh, lovely and children love color and they love their taste, but we really have to um, give more effort in the, in the development of, of new dishes for children in schools. As uh, Professor Koenig has already made a very negative con uh, comment on nudging, well, I shall do my best uh, to perhaps modify this position. 
well, these are my topics, uh, nudging the concept behind. Then we have a look to the different nudges and how do they work. Um, the nudging in different settings, let us say, in the mass catering. Um, and uh, then in the end, we will have a look to the limits of nudging and make some conclusions. Well, marketing, if you look uh, <laughs> to this a little bit closer or deeper, you can see that uh, behind the marketing, uh, you will find all nudging strategies of what you can think about it. Uh, so for instance, the placement when uh, the lightning or the fruits and vegetables um, to give you a uh, certain profile or that does mean, hi, oh, it's uh, very nutrient for me um, to all the portion sizes and we discussed just uh, also about pricing and pricing is a very very interesting thing we can lower the price for vegetables and fruits uh, and uh, increase the prices for meat this is one of the things uh, what i think which will work better than any other things and you see here uh, other possibilities um, as priming, for instance, or make a certain promotion or bring um, the vegetables and fruits closer to the customers. Well, and uh, then behavioral notches were more likely to be successful than others. That does mean we have to change the environment. Um, I will uh, make some remarks about it uh, afterwards. The kind of nudge doesn't rely on people's collaboration or volition and convenience enhancements make healthy options easier to select. And one typical uh, example um, you can see here are, uh, for instance, pre-cut fruits or vegetables. Uh, this is very good for children, small children, but uh, it uh, works very well with uh, the elderly too. Um, changes of sizes of plates and bottles or glasses, the portion sizes, um, and um, to put the healthier food options closer to the customer, to the guest, uh, or to the front of the cafeteria or serving desk. When we had seen how um, it works, we decided to make in our revision of the DGE quality standards for meals and catering, uh, it is for the different settings uh, like workplace canteens and schools and nurseries and uh, hospitals as well. Um, we decided to put in um, these um, possibilities of nudges. The most important limit um, is that nudging only refers to a, a very, very small range of possible interventions. And we said that it is more important to pick up and have a look to the fair food environment. And uh, this is defined as all environmental factors that influence nutritional behavior throughout the entire behavioral process. And uh, the influence affects not only uh, the actual decisions in the concrete situations, but the entire process. And uh, you find uh, this presentation or this uh, picture here above, it was developed by my colleague, uh, Britta Renner. And she said, well, we have to look always to the four phases, exposition, access, choice, and consumption. And therefore, uh, the environment will be much more than only have a look to the different choices. Nudging will work only in this aspect. And therefore, um, this is one of uh, the typical limits what we have to keep in mind. Conclusion. Nudge strategies can be effective in food choice and therefore alterate the daily diet. Nudging causes normally only low costs. 
this is one of the things about uh, <clears throat> is working very well. Even small effects on the individual part can lead on population basis to great improvements of dietary patterns. And therefore it is very good to go to the mass catering institutions uh, because you will um, have a lot of people in which you can uh, see if it works or not. Nudges are not reliant on education and incomes and tackle health inequalities and as well, but um, is, this is very, very difficult. I hope, like Henny Ritzler um, <coughs> had said, that um, when we look more and more deeper to aspects of sustainability that people will um, uh, receive uh, that uh, it made sense and uh, not only the health, but uh, sustainability too. And perhaps, um, yes, uh, one of the, of the things um, what I mentioned was really to, to lower the prices. And perhaps this will be uh, the best nudge uh, in order to uh, have some uh, well, effects on the parents. For the time being, we can state um, that SNCC 5 campaign is in many parts uh, successful. But there's one thing we didn't reach. We have to accept that we did not come closer to our objectives. First, to significantly raise the awareness of the five a day rule. And also second, to boost the consumption of food and vegetables. Maybe, um, this is also one of the effects of Corona. People have other things on their minds. Um, you have links in the presentation that I will make available to uh, learn more for those who would like. But uh, to get fresh ID on the table, I think we have to look on the one hand on the challenge, and then uh, we have to look uh, what is the current environment and whether we have really a momentum. And uh, I think you know that from our communication, we believe that there is a special momentum for the moment to stimulate consumption of fruit and vegetables uh, outside the, uh, the, the European Union. But here we are going to talk about uh, those 5% of consumer that we want to cherish with quality product and with uh, an healthy diet. To do that, we have a challenge, and the challenge is linked to, um, uh, I, 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 I will not be fair with, uh, nice with uh, nobody. I think we, uh, if we want to understand why we are there, I think there are responsibility, there are shared responsibility, and there are things that we need to do. First, the consumer. I think we have um, uh, a statement that most of the generation and most of the member states are below this average that I have just shown. Our set is that we are in a relatively dynamic uh, and competitive sector. We have shown the resilience of the sector adapting very quickly in the COVID uh, time, uh, but we are fragmented. And we have also a lot of differences between the production and the retail base. Uh, but I think we are also a sector a policy maker, but when we look at the common agriculture policy, 3% of the budget go to fruit and vegetables. So there is 97% of the budget which go to other products. So I think we, we are a sector with a product which have the solution both from health and environmental, as we will see uh, a little bit later in the presentation. And um, this is not sufficiently funded or supported. The momentum is with the Green Deal and the Farm to Fall, because it has to take into account societal concern to move towards a more balanced diet. But I think all these moves need to be coherent, need to be consistent, and have a forward-looking uh, step with the ambition that uh, it is there. And unfortunately, when we look at the general uh, outfit of the Farm to Fork, which is to move from sustainable food production to sustainable food processing towards food sustainable food consumption, I must say there are no real uh, specific strategy for um, fruit and vegetable sector. I will not say that they are not 
uh, anything because we have already seen that based on the strategy, so not a legislation, but I think if we want to change really the, the things, and I think there are a lot of reasons. If you look at this double pyramid that I often use in presentation of Barilla, I use it because it's not coming from our sector, it's coming from uh, another food uh, foundation. We are the best category in terms of health benefit. We were at the start of the, of the story in 2009, convincing the commission to have a, a budget of 100 million uh, euro. This budget has been now increased to 150 million, but I think we still know with the reform which is coming up uh, with the evaluation of the policy, need to continue adapting this tool, have more education of the youngest and their parents. Uh, the system needs to be easier to be implemented everywhere across Europe. There are still member states, including France, which has one of the larger budgets. We still have difficulty to uh, have the system uh, in place. And I think we need to get sufficient budget. I think 150 million euro is nice. Uh, it has to be used uh, fully before we claim for more, but if we would like to get a piece of fruit every day to the children, I think we need to multiply this by five or by six. Uh, we have seen one program, and I suppose uh, um, uh, the, the next uh, uh, presenter will also talk about activity, uh, which are done in, in this case uh, in, in Spain. Uh, I think we have a, a good tool. Uh, we are one of the best customers of the uh, of DG Agri with 30% of the budget uh, currently used for uh, or benefit uh, to the benefit of the fruit and vegetable sector. I think we have seen that uh, we have a dedicated line. This dedicated line has been almost doubled uh, this year. So I think uh, we, we cannot blame that uh, we don't have our fair share, but I think it's important that this is further uh, considered to be improved in the future. I think there's been a remark by the present, the, the, the previous speaker to make sure that we could uh, have um, an action on a longer time if the action is successful for diet in the EU health policy platform with fresh fell uh, members and uh, a number of other stakeholders. Uh, we finally uh, managed to get 50 public and private stakeholders uh, signing up the, the fresh fell statement on stimulating fresh fruit and vegetable consumption. We have identified a long list of action that could be done on economic, social, and uh, I think this year was a special year for fruit and vegetable. It was the first ever international year for fruit and vegetable. Good opportunity to raise the awareness on the sector, on the consumption, on the benefit of fruit and vegetable, on the repos repositioning of the fruit and vegetable in the public debate. Uh, we have set up this uh, Speak Up uh, Fruit and Vegetable campaign. Uh, I'll put the link there uh, on, on Twitter so that you can see all the action that we have made uh, recently to build on that. And I think we have also to use this moment to demystify a number of uh, incorrect thinking about fruit and vegetable sector. This morning there were a discussion about the prices. Are fruit and vegetable too expensive? I think everyone is challenging the price of fruit and vegetable, but it's possible to have the five a day serving for maybe uh, maximum two euro. Uh, there is the possibility to have a, a very affordable, uh, healthy diet, and nobody will challenge if they buy chocolate, which are eight or nine times or ten times more expensive than uh, fruit and vegetables. So I think it's a question of uh, education about uh, the right price and fruit and vegetables remain relatively cheap, uh, but also rectified wrong image on pesticide uh, residue on uh, food loss and food waste, that 40% of the product are, are wasted somewhere. I think that all these things need to be corrected. COVID has been an opportunity for reconciling people with health, with nature and environment, and also with themselves, with a new approach to food and cooking, having more time being at home. And we know that uh, the primary place for consuming fruit and vegetables is at home. I think we have to work on convenience, on snacking, on um, uh, eating fruit and vegetable on the go when we go back to office and when we travel inefficient in our sector, uh, if we don't have enough arguments to convince politicians on the one hand, and um, consumer on the other hand. And if we 
are successful, uh, adding this additional piece of fruit and vegetable, which um, is missing in most of the um, attitude of the uh, consumer across Europe, uh, we can be moving to a win-win-win result for the planet, for the consumer, and for the sector. That The Global Alliance for the Promotion of Fruits and Vegetables, Five a Day, is a non-profit collaboration forum that gathers national and international uh, entities, most of them named Five a Day, with the objective of creating an international network uh, to facilitate the change uh, of knowledge, resources, and tools. IAM5 is currently uh, made up of uh, 40 entities from 32 countries, 15 of them European, as five a day uh, Germany. More than 70% of the European population do not, do, do not consume the, the adequate amount, uh, say that 400 uh, grams daily or at least five serving a day. In 2017, only one in four people ate fruit at least twice a day, and 30, 36% of the European population did not eat fruit or vegetable in their daily basis. This document produced by the FAO WHO International Workshop provides an overview of the global evidence on the effectiveness of policies, laws, regulation, and programs from government, civil society, NGOs, and the private sectors that promote fruit and vegetable consumption. The report has a vast collection, a vast collection of initiatives around the world and presents case studies, three of them reported by five a day programs such as the World Fruits and Vegetable Day, which has mobilized some governments in, the, in Latin America, as Chile, Costa Rica, and El Salvador, to declare a national day of fruits and vegetables. Other cases, uh, other ca case studies selected were the New Zealand and Guatemala and fruits and vegetable uh, school programs. Advocate against policies that adversely impact fruits and vegetable intake, such as as aggressive marketing, low prices, or easily accessible of ultra-processed food. It was mentioned before that ultra-processed food is currently competing with fruits and vegetables in the opportunity of consumption, but also using fruits and vegetables as a claim to sell more ultra-processed food. Identified cross-sectional opportunities. Uh, Philip has said that it's a very fragmented policy, but we, have, we need to take advantage and, and the opportunity to promote healthy diets, rich in fruits and vegetables, as part of other policies, as for example, environmental climate change, to mutually reinforce the actions. And to be effective, intervention should start early in life and be supported by all the health professionals in different settings. It is a question, it is a matter of, of education too, and, but also of exposure. To be exposed to fruits and vegetables from the early uh, ages can uh, promote the consumption of fruits and vegetables in the future. And also, it is important to mention that if we have a really good uh, tool to increase uh, the availability of fruits and vegetables in public setting, for example, is a, one example is the green public procurement. Given that the opportunity to the public sector to use in their tenders the uh, a procurement that pro facilitates the availability and affordability of uh, fruits and vegetables in different settings, as school and uh, workplaces or healthcare um, facilities. And finally, we build alliance between consumers and producers to increase mutual benefits uh, to advocate for food systems that are healthier, friendlier to fruits and vegetables and more sustainable. As Philip said, it is the momentum. We are, we are in the right place and at the right time. And it's time to act. To act. Europe, with, it is a provider of a, a framework uh, in policies and awareness of the, of the consumer that it's, uh, it is really positive to, to implement actions to, to, 
uh, improve the health uh, the diet on in European population. The fruit and vegetable sector is a strategic in the European Union to consolidate healthier and more sustainable food system where fruits and vegetables are available, accessible and affordable for everyone. And for this reason, I invite you to take part of these years of, of celebration. Fruits and vegetables are not only our way of life, but also food for givers that gives uh, health and prosperity to our society and to the planet. So happy new year, happy uh, international year of fruits and vegetables. And I invite you to, to uh, navigate uh, the documents provide for the uh, international workshop of FAO, WHO on fruits and vegetables because they, they uh, provide some really good recommendations to hold, to hold it uh, over programs in the day to day. Thank you very much. So here we are again. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for our last session. So good afternoon, everyone. I uh, I have now had to switch a little bit this morning. I was my computer just didn't want to uh, co cooperate. So uh, I will not be using any kind of PowerPoint or uh, nice graphs. I, I will just speak with my notes. So. Uh, which is uh, also a, a nice change. We've seen some very interesting uh, presentations. I'm, I'm very grateful for, for the speakers before because it's very inspiring and there are a lot of things that I would be continuing to use in my uh, daily work. So to, to place things in context. So for uh, the participants who are less familiar how it works uh, in these institutions at the European level, we are organized by direction, uh, the direction general. Um, so I am in the agriculture one, but we have one that is in charge of um, what we call health or so santé. Uh, and they are also very involved with the topic of the day. So the, the whole nutrition and um, uh, non-communicable uh, diseases, obesity and all this. And they, they have, uh, they, they have a whole uh, policy uh, agenda there. What this all started for us, we are as our legal basis is the uh, common agriculture policy. So the basis is we're trying to support uh, income for farmers. So we, we, we have several things that we're doing at EU level, I would say. So the, the promotion policy, which started, of course, again, like I said, uh, as a tool to support income for farmers, but now, uh, as, uh, as Philippe has rightly pointed out, uh, a lot of it is uh, going to fruit and vegetable campaigns. And they're not only, I would say, they, they are called single uh, campaigns uh, in, or multi campaigns. And, and not only uh, um, in single uh, campaigns are fruit and vegetables very well represented and are actually in our data uh, the most represented, uh, but also in the multi campaigns. EU fruit vegetable milk scheme. Um, so it's not just about fruit and vegetable. And the amount there that we spend is about 250 million per year. Uh, and a little bit more than half of that goes to fruit and vegetables. Uh, how are we going, going to distribute uh, physically to children fruit and vegetables and actually do uh, educational uh, measures when they are being homeschooled? So despite the whole COVID, there was quite the implementation of the program, but it is, at least from the EU point of view, we see it as a very light program, uh, very easy to implement. Some uh, member states have a very high implementation rate. Some others are less good pupils. And, uh, and I fully agree with what Philippe was saying. If we were to put a fruit to each child uh, in each school in, uh, in the EU, uh, for a year, it's not a budget of 200, uh, 250 million uh, euros that we would need. It's uh, 4 billion. And, and even for schools, they are not all participating and not all willing to participate. Parents are not always on the line. The directors are not on the line. The, the state is not on the line. Uh, Sweden is not participating in the fruit uh, part. They're only participating in the milk part. Um, so. It, it is, this program is going to be reviewed um, because there is a, a time limit on it and also there is a green deal behind it. And it's, it will be improved in a way uh, if it needs to be, but it is not the answer to all the questions. 
So a lot of uh, there are a lot, it's on all and everybody's uh, lips. The green deal and part of it the farm to fork, which is really touching on actual the, the food, the producing the food and the the delivering the food, the whole supply chain. Uh, a lot has been said about what we said on organics, pesticides and antibiotics and all this. And if you look at the text and you do a word search, there is very little on fruit and vegetables. And I, I fully agree because I was uh, tasked to try to put fruit and vegetables into that document. And in the end, as a political consensus, it, there is something on plant-based and fruit and vegetable, but there is no concrete action platform that has been created by our, D, our, our sister DG uh, Joint Research Center, it's called. It's called uh, Knowledge for um, and, and the Knowledge Center. And there, there is a whole page on fruit and vegetables. And there is actually a tab on all the policies that have been taken by member states. And I think this is a real value added that we, as the European Commission, give to, uh, to uh, the citizens and then to the member states, is that we create a platform where we can see in one glance what has been done in Denmark, in Sweden, in Austria, in Spain, and compare those practices, and I would say sort of those best practices in exchange. So it's a start. I'm very grateful, especially to Mrs. Arendt Sacevedo, that she mentioned the health promoting environment. Uh, and this, I think, from a ministerial perspective, um, and I, I was working about 20 years in obesity research and obesity management. And I can tell you, it's really, really important to take care that the food environment becomes healthier, that the healthy choice is really the easy choice. Um, and this is the focus uh, of our ministry three pillars, and I think this is also important, not to talk only about uh, transferring information uh, and uh, knowledge. Um, it's in, in this project, they focus on evidence-based information, but also um, bringing this information to women pregnant women, breastfeeding women, young families, uh, and train them how to bring the knowledge to the table, to the kitchen. When we look to Germany, they have created the inform and um, we do something very similar uh, that we develop standards, for example, for um, healthy nutrition in schools, in kindergartens, now the canteen is uh, on the way, this is definitely helpful, but I also have to be a bit, yeah, to be self-critic and um, see that the implementation of these standards is not obligatory. And sometimes uh, you have trade-offs between the sectors. So um, the Ministry for Education um, probably have sometimes different ideas. So, uh, then the standard is not used. This would be something, um, and that's, yeah, that we, we start working much more or leaving much more our silos and meet in the marketplace uh, and cooperate uh, in a different way as we have done uh, before. Um, and focus on the environment, also with the focus on those from a lower socioeconomic status. Uh, because many of the policies are, and this is my personal opinion, um, um, made for those who have the money and the education. Uh, they have access um, and people with a lower socioeconomic status, they are quite often not um, educated in the same way and they don't have the money. So um, this is certainly um, a task for the ministries uh, that no one is left behind. And there is one target, 
healthy, sustainable nutrition for all. Again, not leaving anybody behind. And um, here we discuss, and the food system is really complex. Uh, but if we want to increase food and vegetable um, consumption, then we have to see how the sectors uh, are intertwined and um, not all have the same goal. And um, yeah, trade-offs, we have to talk about the trade-offs and we have to find the solutions and it's, it's not an easy task. Um, the climate-friendly environment are the overall targets for all of us. Uh, if, we, if we don't find solutions together and to find the solutions, I think we have to be prepared that uh, every sector has to give in something. Thank you very much. And also thank you very much for having me here today. Good afternoon to everybody. Well, having very carefully listened to Celine's and Karin's words, um, I, I have the impression that although our point of departure might be slightly different, to some extent agri-based, to some extent nutrition-based, I think our basic target in essence is identical. We all want nutrition and food to be more healthy and to be more environment friendly, most importantly in terms of climate change. Whom do we have to address in particular? And, and I'm very grateful for, for Karin's words. And, and I also, from a very German point of view, would like to, to, to emphasize that. I can almost literally repeat what you said, Karin. Um, no one has to be left behind. We want to take on board everybody, not only those consumers who are well educated and who have the means um, to, to, to use, to apply information, but also those more vulnerable parts of the population um, who are age-wise or um, due to different reasons, um, education or whatever, um, um, less in a position to benefit from more information and requires a different response in terms of policy. Our nutrition policy pursues a, a very a very broad and holistic approach. Um, our idea is to, on the one hand, improve the knowledge, the competence, the awareness of consumers. Um, and to some extent, we think this is possible. But on the other hand, um, and most importantly, in terms of the vulnerable parts of the population, um, we also want to change the, the food environment. How do we do this? Um, in respect of um, consumer awareness, consumer competence, Karin already mentioned the INFORM action plan, which was established in Germany 13 years ago. And this is still very important. About roughly 270 projects are applied in Germany within the framework of this action plan. And many of these products aim at um, the improvement of consumer competence. For example, a bit more than four years ago, um, we established um, the National Center for Nutrition. The National Center for Nutrition, which has um, um, many um, 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 uh, tasks and um, a very important one um, related to um, pupils at school is that the center um, develops and publishes um, information material with, which then through the lender, through the, the, the regions um, are distributed um, to pupils, the food environment. And this is something I think, which has been more and more done within the course of the last couple of years a very, very important um, measure um, in, in, in that respect, of course, um, has been Nutri-Score. And um, Nutri-Score 
is also specifically related um, to, to fruit and vegetables because everybody um, um, knows that um, um, the content of, of um, vegetables and fruits um, um, does lead to um, a better um, 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 result in terms of, of nutri score. Um, and, and also, we already mentioned, Celine, that was something you referred to, um, the um, EU school scheme, which is another measure um, improving the, the food environment um, at the end of the day. Um, the third and maybe the core measure to um, improve the food environment um, is something I think which also is very important from Ms. Arendt Atevizos' point of view. Um, just a couple of months ago, the German Society, Society for Nutrition, the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Ernährung, DGE, updated um, its um, quality standards for communal catering. Um, and this, um, as a matter of fact, um, is, is, is the essence of um, 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 and the food environment in schools and um, 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 nursery homes and, and, and hospitals. Um, and therefore, we, we used our presidency to the council uh, last year um, in order to, 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 to move ahead in terms of, of food labeling. And Karin, yes, um, you're smiling. And um, at this point in time, I'm smiling too because um, we did it. We got a lot further than, than many expected. Um, um, it was a bit blood, sweat, and tears because it's highly emotional and, and, and also, um, um, in terms of substance, a, a very important debate. Um, but I think um, the Commission um, um, has um, taken a good stance um, by publishing the Farm to Fork strategy, and we would like to continue um, um, on that path and. Um, to, to strengthen um, the Commission's intention to um, publish in 2022 um, a, a legislative proposal, including um, the um, um, front of pack labeling. Uh, that health uh, is not as prominent I, as I would expect it to be. Because what is the overall target? It's climate nowadays, sustainability, and healthy people. Because our health systems will explode if we don't find the key to reduce the obesity rates and uh, the NCD rates. Um, at, at least in Austria, we will not be able to cover it to the same extent as we do it uh, nowadays. Um, and fruit and vegetables is a good example. Uh, it's healthy. So why isn't it, if you put a stronger focus on health, then it would be easy to say, okay, uh, now we go for promoting vegetables and fruits. Farm to fork strategy as an ideal framework where you could put this in uh, with the uh, let's say the sticker health, and health is uh, health is not prominent uh, in the strategy and in the in the all the the working groups. And I, I agree but, fully. <laughs> uh, no, but it's I think you have to the farm to fork is part of the green deal, so it's really it was uh presented as a, an initiative really okay we have a climate emergency and we we need to really focus on this and so it's a compromise between different interests huh? I, and you see the one reference on fruit and vegetables is about taxation it makes it's really putting in question what what was the thinking behind and we are also scratching our heads you know why what would you detax fruit and vegetables, not tax higher certain other. So the farm to fork is really concentrating on sustainable farming, sustainable production, and sustainable eating. And yes, I, I fully agree that it's it could be a missed opportunity. It doesn't mean that it's not something that the commission uh, or, or the EU institutions will not take uh, further. And then there is a lot to be done with fruit and vegetables. But but to answer uh, one uh, one question that's popping up is uh, why is the 
consumption still below recommended quantities. I don't think, and that's what I said at my the very beginning, I think we're all here convinced that this is healthy and that this is the right choice. But if you talk a little bit around, um, it is something we have to re-educate people about. And, and, and when you see the marketing, the, uh, a very aggressive marketing on TV, in, uh, in, in, on the streets, it, it, you don't see aggr aggressive marketing for apples and, and, and bananas. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, so it starts very young, and then therefore the school scheme is, uh, is it has a lot on its shoulder. It, it is a it's a great program, but it's not in every school, and it's you cannot raise the whole uh, the, the whole expectation of turning around uh, the entire EU populations towards healthy eating with just that scheme. And so it's it's a nudge, and we've heard about nudging. Uh, and if you look at uh, corporate canteens, huh? if you look at uh, um, uh, uh, catering in general, there's not just the, the, the canteens in the schools. On, on, on people, on working life, there is just no way that you can ask them to have, uh, um, it, it's, it's like we said, the LC choice needs to be the easy choice. And it, it, when you don't have time to cook healthy and we are, when you've not been taught because we are in, in entering a new generation of people who are now being taught, but it is not something that we ourselves inherited. I certainly wasn't. Um, and so without criticism to my parents, but it was just not that generation. We, we had to eat quickly and, and healthy was not uh, in the minds. And so this might change, but it is now the shift. Um, fiscal measures, um are always something to look at, um, and and I think um, they can they can have some impact and some importance um, if they are well um, shaped and well um, applied. Um, anyway, we have to make some some caveats in in, in terms of um, a a tax reduction for fruit and vegetables. Of course, we we first um, would have to change EU law to, to to have a substantial impact because. Um, currently, um, a, the lower VAT rate um, is confined to 5%. In Germany, um, the, the current rate is 7%. Therefore, um, a reduction from 7 to 5 probably would not have a, a very large impact. Secondly, um, something we also have to bear in mind is that we need to um, have a a price difference at the end of the day. Um, very often, if taxa taxation changes, um, <laughs> it produces or retailers um, benefiting from the tax changes. And that is something which um, obviously could be interesting for, for some taking part in this discussion, but it's in terms of nutrition policy, this cannot be the final target. And, um, and um, Thirdly, um, um, I think we also um, have to bear in mind um, that um, we, we have to increase the consumption of, of fruit and vegetables. Um, um, already today, fruit and vegetables um, are one of the main sources for food losses and waste in private households. Um, and, and therefore, um, I think food policy can only be successful if everything is coherent, um, it has to be consist of different modules and everything has to be um, in line with the other elements. Um, um, at the end of the day, I think we, we mustn't be too pessimistic. Of course, there is a long way to go, um, but at least the situation in Germany already has changed. I'm um, talking about um, meat consumption. The number of vegetarians has substantially, um, has significantly increased. Um, and elaborating um, and applying all effective and efficient measures we have at our disposal. Um, but please um, continue, let's continue in a optimistic and, and, and constructive spirit. Uh, um, otherwise, I think it's not easier to, to succeed. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, the organizers in the background. And thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your participation. And hope to see you there again. Thank you very much. Thanks. Let's have an active break together. Since I stopped my career, I started working for um, the Balmer, the health, health insurance company. And uh, I'm an ambassador for 
healthy healthiness and um, sports ambassador. And I just want to invite you to um, join me for this little, it's not really a workout. It's just having an active break because sitting all day long is not the best. So maybe just, we, let's just start, just um, stand on the left leg and um, move your ankle, your, your feet in one direction. Just make big circles 